All right, so it seems like uh, lately, in past few years, this interest in you know tactical stuff, gear, skills, has really taken an uptick. Um, there's a lot of blogs that are dedicated on developing tactical skill skills. Civilians are buying tactical flashlights. They're taking classes on tactical fighting, um, and it's just really fascinating. We've seen a lot of interest in it on theartofmanliness.com. And one of the, the bigger websites in this whole tactical genre is a website called ITS Tactical, or what I've been calling it. I've been calling it It's Tactical, but I just found out that it's not It's Tactical. It's ITS Tactical. They're based out of Texas. They publish articles on how just, just a variety of skills, first aid, emergency prep, hand-to-hand combat, uh, guns, I mean, you name it, they got it covered. And it's geared towards anybody in law enforcement or the military, but it's also geared towards civilians. Um, really popular stuff. They've had a lot of stuff go viral on the internet on, like, for example, how to escape from zip ties. Uh, pretty cool video. Definitely recommend you check it out. Anyways, uh, today's guest is the founder and owner of ITS Tactical. His name is Brian Black, and we're going to talk about this whole tactical movement or you know trend uh, that's going on in America right now, and also talk about uh, how just regular average guys can benefit from learning a few tactical skills and which ones you should learn. So stay tuned. All right, Brian Black, welcome to the show. Thanks, Brett. I appreciate you having me, man. Okay, so before we begin, I need you to clarify something. <laughs> sure. For our readers, is it it's tactical or ITS tactical? It is ITS tactical, um, which which started out or which is an acronym for Imminent Threat Solutions. So, um, our point of kind of doing the ITS tactical thing was just being in the tactical industry in general and kind of wanting to shorten that. Yeah, because I'll be honest with you, like for like the longest time when I first <laughs> discovered you, I I I called you guys. It's tactical, and I, I still do. I won't hold it against you, man. Okay, because I mean, it made sense. Like, yeah, it, you guys, it's a tactical website. You know, it, it, that was it's, one of those. It's tactical. Yeah, that was one of those just interesting coincidences that happened. You know, it, you know, to be honest, I never even thought of a thought of the name in that regard before, and then. People started saying, I was like, oh, wow, it really does say that. So. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's cool. Well, I'm glad I, I can call it It's Tactical. It's ITS, Imminent Threat Solutions. So what's the story behind it? How did how did this website start? Because it's got, I mean, it's huge. It's got a big following um, amongst not only military and law enforcement, but also civilians. Um, sure. So tell us about it. How did you get started with ITS Tactical? Well, I mean, it really kind of started as just a kind of a passion of mine. Um, I started in 2009 because I wanted to do something not only that I was passionate about, um, but I really wanted to build an online resource to highlight um, what I felt was a shortcoming in the tactical industry, which was an absence of skill set based information. Um, just like you with Art of Manliness, uh, you guys have a lot of skill based articles, too, and um, that's why I love reading it as well. Um, but I really wanted to kind of bring that to the tactical industry and uh, just really support that self-sufficient lifestyle. Yeah. So, I mean, who's your target audience? Is it pretty much anyone who's interested in this or is there a particular person or group you're trying to go after? Really, it's just anybody that wants the information, honestly. I mean, we've we've attracted a lot of, like you said, law enforcement and military as well as um, just kind of outdoor enthusiasts and civilians and um, people that just really want to learn this stuff. So it's been it's been a really cool experience. Cool. What's your background? Do you have any background in law enforcement or anything like that? Or has it just been a passion of yours? Well, um, I got started, I guess my, my background comes from the military and also just from uh, – from just my passion in general, but I was in the Navy for a few years. So I was able to kind of pull those skills, um, that I learned there. Um, and just, it kind of enhanced my general interests that I've had all my life and just kind of, I guess, gadgets and gear and things like that too. So, um, I was able to pull that with, um, I spent some time after high school working in a commercial photography studio. So I kind of used that a little bit. Oh, wow. Um, also went to school for, Technically, my degree is in communication technology, which is website design um, at the school I went to at University of Texas. But um, then I got a minor in journalism, so I was like kind of able to throw all those things into the mix. And that's kind of – Yeah. <clears throat> excuse me. How I ended up with uh, what, what we have now. Awesome. So it looks like you're just combining a whole bunch of skill sets into this 
awesome business now. Yeah, know? I mean, it was it's been really cool. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, so we've been th- saying this word tactical a lot. Um, yeah. So it, it's getting thrown around all over the place now. Like companies are using it to market products. Like <laughs> everything, there's like tactical everything now. Like tactical yes. flashlights. There's like tactical backpacks. There's tactical shoes. What is what? Can you define tactical? What exactly does that mean? Well, I first of all, I'm not going to claim to be the uh, the be all end all. Uh, explanation on the word, but um, when we started back in 2009, my version or my vision of tactical was basically just thinking with tactics or planning before action. So that's my definition of it. Um, some might say that you know, tact or tactical means, I guess, military esque or law enforcement esque or something along those lines. But I mean, to me, it really just means you know, having a plan and thinking with tactics and. And it's not just for like self-defense, but it's also in other areas of life as well, I imagine. Yeah. I mean, that's how I'd, I'd agree with that for sure. And why do you think there's been this uptick, uh, not just amongst military and, you know, LEOs, but like civilians are like, like, it's like a new thing. Like, I mean, like I, I, you know, we're both on Tumblr. Uh, I see you on there and like, it's amazing. Like the number of like civilians who just like their blogs are just like picture after picture, like (laughs) AR 15s and like tactical gear and like you know, uh, what like grappling hooks and like, I mean, what, what's going on there? Why do you think there's such an interest in it? You, you know, I think, uh, it probably has a lot to do with just the overwhelming support that our military and law enforcement and first responders are getting nowadays. Um, which is a great thing. I love that that's happening in America right now. Um, but you know, it's also led the way led to a lot of people wondering what they're using, why they're using it and you know, what makes it what makes it great. So, um, you know, technology today is making it super easy to become knowledgeable in the subjects that, you know, those guys are of what they're using. So I think that has a lot to do with it. And that would probably be, be my uh, best guess on, on why that's happening. Yeah. So do you think any, it has anything to do with like the, the zombie apocalypse or everyone's <laughs> worried about that? <laughs> you know, that's kind of faded a little bit, which is interesting. It kind of came and went and I don't know, it, it it's still kind of a, a prevalent thing, but yeah. No, I, no. I, I couldn't tell you for sure. Couldn't tell you for sure. Yeah, it is kind of interesting. That whole zombie apocalypse, getting ready for the zombie apocalypse is like not a thing anymore. You really don't see it all that often. Well, you know, to me, it's like, uh, I don't know, maybe people are able to use that as a way to get prepared and hey, you know, whatever works. If that's what's going to make you, you know, learn some skills that'll help you in life, then so be it. So, yeah. Okay. So, um, what I love about your website, like you said, it's very skills based, like shows you like cool stuff that guys want to know. And I'm sure I know you, I know you have a lot of female readers too, but it's like, it's, you know, guys love this stuff, you know, besides like the usefulness of, I mean, it it is useful to know like how to splint legs and how to, uh, you know, protect your home from home invasions and things like that. Uh, is there, do you think there's another benefit that men specifically can get from learning and practicing tactical skills? Well, um, I will kind of go back to the self-sufficiency, self-sufficiency nature of, of what we were talking about. And that's, I mean, to me, that's the big take home is, you know, the, the more, you know, the better you can protect yourself and your family. And, and that would be my big take home. Obviously if it's a life-saving skill, then, you know, that becomes the goal is that, you know, now you've got that, that knowledge, so to speak, to be able to, to save a life. So, you know, those are the big take homes for me with, with the usefulness of these skills. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's just, um, yeah, just, I love knowing that I can do that if I had yeah. to. I mean, it's, it's such an empowering feeling, feeling to like have that knowledge and be like, yeah, yeah, I could start a fire without matches if I needed to, or I could pick this lock if I got locked out of some building, if I needed to, it's, it's really, I mean, yeah, it just, it makes me feel awesome. Yeah. It's a great, I mean, it's a great, uh, just, uh, I guess knowledge booster and also, it's, it is empowering. I mean, that's a great way to describe it. I mean, it's, you know, the, the mind controls the body. It's not the other way around. So, so having those things in your, your mental toolbox and, and knowing you can achieve those is, it just really helps in all aspects of life. I feel. Yeah. So I know whenever we publish articles or content about tactical related stuff, whether it's like, so, you know, uh, combatives, uh, firearms related stuff, uh, people, there's a lot, we, every once in a while we get like people who are sort of uncomfortable with it. They're like, this is sort mm-hmm. of like paramilitary militia. It's like, I think, what, what are you guys <laughs> doing here? Um, I mean, how do you, what's your response? Like, how do you, 
what advice would you give to someone who's like, yeah, I want to like get into this. Like I, there's something I want to be self-sufficient. I want to be able to protect myself, my family, be able to survive whenever, you know, crises happen or emergency mm-hmm. happens. Uh, but I don't want to give off that kooky, like I'm going to be a separatist from the U S <laughs> vibe. I mean, what, what advice do you have about that? You know, you know, first of all, I mean, if your reasons for getting into this stuff are that you truly do want to get into it for the right purposes, which is to learn and, you know, enhance your skill sets, then that's all you really need to know. I mean, yeah, who cares what everybody else thinks is, <laughs> is my opinion. But, you know, what what is sad is that terms like, you know, militia have gotten a negative connotation nowadays yeah. considering what, you know, back in the Revolutionary War time, militia stood for, you know, a group that was ready to help our government in a time of need. So. Yeah, you know, it is kind of sad that that stuff like that gets lumped in with, you know, what's going on with the, the tactical industry. But um, I think a, a tactical way of thinking doesn't equal <laughs> government mm-hmm. overthrow or anything like that. So, yeah. well, I think you guys do a great job of making this your the content uh, very approachable to any person in any walk of life. Like I don't feel like, like me, I'm not like, I don't have like that military law enforcement background, but I read this stuff. I'm like, I'm not intimidated by it. And like, it's just like, it's really approachable, really do- well done. So congratulations and kudos for that. Yeah. I appreciate it. Um, so, okay, let's get down to this. We kind of talked about general stuff about tactical. We can be kind of talking about like these tactical skills. I mean, we haven't really talked about any specifics. Sure. Um, are there tactical skill sets? that you think every man should master? I mean, are there specific areas that they should, that a guy should focus on? Yeah. I mean, in my opinion, um, and this is a question I get asked a lot too. Oh, sure. Um, but you know, I feel there's, and there's about 10 big areas that I like to, to talk to people about. Um, really the big thing is, is mindset. I mean, I can't, reiterate that enough. I mean, like I said earlier, the mind controls the body and the, the more, you know, the, the better you can handle any situation, but, um, just from, you know, the actual mindset of knowing how to handle yourself, whether that's in a self-defense nature, whether that's just purely, you know, having situational awareness and being able to look around when you're out in public and not staring down at your cell phone and kind of seeing things coming at you, which will help you prepare better, um, for threats you might face. Um, to just, you know, having a general working knowledge of a lot of different things, kind of a, uh, a jack of all trades, master of none approach, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, I mean, I'm guessing, uh, I think if you talked about like, you know, first aid, I think you talk about that. It's an important thing to get yeah, down. Absolutely. Um, um, that's another big one for, for us. Um, just the medical related nature of some of the articles we write about. I mean, you know, being able to to save a life is a huge skill, um, not only having the, the tools and equipment you need to do so, but the knowledge as well. Um, and, you know, while it's really hard to you know, send someone to a, a medical course online mm-hmm. um, and, and even provide that kind of information, information which we wouldn't, um, we, we do try to have articles that, you know, promote kind of the uh, casualty care aspect of things and really kind of becoming aware of what kind of tools are important to have at your disposal. Because, you know, one thing I like to say is that even if you don't know how to use some of these things, having them at your disposal could mean the difference between, you know, someone being able to save your life. So, you know, it's, it's important stuff. So, I mean, not only the medical stuff, I mean, some other big ones are, you know, fitness is a huge one for me. Um, I, and I'm not saying you have to be Hercules, but, you know, being able to, to save your own life to me is a, is a pretty big one, you know, um, whether that's getting over a fence, if you had to, or over a wall or, you know, carrying your family out of a burning building, it's, you know, it's important. And it's something that often gets neglected, you know, and everything too. Um, another big one is, you know, knot tying. I I can't tell you how many times I've (laughs) utilized (laughs) knots. Um, you know, I've had to tie knots way more often than I've had to, uh, to shoot my gun for real. So, (laughs) and that would be zero. So, um, yeah, it's just, uh, it's just looking at those kind of skills that are often under, under underappreciated. And, um, just, we try to highlight that kind of stuff. Like, uh, like you mentioned the, the escape from illegal restraint and, you know, anything having to do with, with lock picking in that regard really has a, uh, you know, a nefarious undertone to it when you're talking about it with somebody, but, you know, in, in real life, I mean, you know, people lock their keys, you know, in the house and in the car and things like that. And 
being able to do that kind of stuff yourself, um, and it's perfectly legal in pretty much every state to do that, um, that, uh, you know, you can save a lot of money that way as, as well as, uh, just being able to take care of yourself and, you know, in the legal restraint scenario too, meaning a home invasion or, you know, something where you're, you're, uh, restrained against your, your will there. So yeah, that's, that's a big one. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, that's, it, that, that happens more often than people think. Uh, it really does. I mean, I just read something today. There's another one. Um, I, I can't even remember where it was, but that just happened today. So. Yeah. People break into their house and they get handcuffed or zip tied right. or whatever, and then they get robbed or yeah. sometimes I, worse. There was like the, that really bad case in Connecticut. Yes. Um, yeah. that was like I the really zip ties. It was yeah. zip ties. Yeah. Um, and it, it's what interesting too, is that it seems like you get a lot of flack from <laughs> people in the law enforcement industry in particular for divulging this information, you know, how to pick your way out of a handcuff or how to like, you're basically, they say like, you're, you're helping the criminals out and you're making it less yeah. safe for law enforcement officers. I mean, how do you respond to that? Well, here's the deal. Um, criminals are going to get this information, whether they, <laughs> you know, they're, they already know it. I mean, they're learning it from being in jail or in prison or whatever you call it. So, um, it's out there. It's yeah. not like, first people to say it but that aside that's not really the big take home um the big take home is that um it is happening to civilians and you know you're talking about a handcuff technology that's left over from 1913 that's still being utilized today not only by law enforcement um but it's you know i can buy a pair of handcuffs at any uh army navy store across the country and online so those are available and if they're available they're going to be utilized against people so you know it's uh, I don't really see a big problem with yeah. just teaching that information, and you know, also, one I've met so many law enforcement guys that can see the benefit of this stuff too. So sure. it's uh, you know, it's not, I, I you know, we used to catch a lot of flack for it in the very beginning back in two thousand nine, but it's yeah, I can't tell you how much more of a, I guess a, uh, a general perception has changed since then, and you know, now it's becoming more common and you know, you're seeing it on TV and it's just, uh, it's, it's great to see. I mean, I love yeah. it. I'm glad that this information is getting out there because at the end of the day, you know, what we're teaching is, you know, okay. So we teach how to get out of handcuffs. Like I said, it's a, a technology that's left over from 1913. That's available to anybody. Um, we're teaching how to get out of zip ties, which, you know, we teach, we're not teaching how to get out of law enforcement grade zip ties. We're teaching how to get out of the ones that the strongest ones that anybody can buy at a Home Depot. Mm. So, you know, I, those are all technologies and, and uh, tools that are available to anybody. Yeah. And I think, you know, you can make the argument too, is that you're kind of highlighting to the law enforcement industry, like the, I guess the illusion of security that Correct. Yeah. Hand, handcuffs provide. Cause like, yeah, I mean, you can just, anyone can, you can get a handcuff key uh, anywhere. Right. And it works on most handcuffs. Like mm -hmm. it's like the same thing. There's like not a special handcuff key, right? They're all no. pretty and much the same. You know, the thing about that too, is that, and I'll, and I'll be the first person to say that with a proper law enforcement handcuff technique, I'm not going to be able to get out. Yeah, of them. exactly. Just, that's the end of the, the end of the story. And, and they know that too. I mean, um, it's not a foolproof solution and, you know, plenty of law enforcement guys I know that I talk to are saying, you know, know that too. So um, you know, it's not as though it's a, it's a foolproof plan. It's, you know, hopefully to help out a civilian that's in, in trouble with that kind of thing. If, if they ever get into that themselves. Yeah. So, and, and speaking of the illusion of security, like, you know, reading yep. your content on like lock picking, like it's made me so much paranoid about my own <laughs> house. It's like, I realize like, it's so easy to break into my house. Like I just like, whenever I lock yeah. the door at night, I'm like, this is, really isn't doing all that much. Um, well, and, and when it, when it, when you, when you get down to the end of it, it's like, it, it's, it really doesn't do that much. It kind of makes me feel good. But if you think about it, it's pretty easy to break into a home. Yeah. Locks are, uh, locks are there to keep honest people honest. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> no, I mean, we do advocate, um, learning lock picking and I think one of the biggest take homes of it is what you said. I mean, that's what I talk about all the time is that it teaches you the illusion of security and how to better protect yourself against, um, the common things that are out there that can defeat 
you know, these locks that you think are, you know, keeping your family safe. So, um, and that, that's the big take home is knowing what to look for, you know, in a lock when you're purchasing one for your home and things like that. So, yeah, it's made me start thinking about like, I need to have like multiple layers of security in my home. Like think about not just the locks, think about other things I could do to either fend off, uh, would be burglars or whatnot. Um, and another thing I want to reiterate, I I love how you bring up, brought up the idea of fitness because mm-hmm. uh, one of the most frustrating things that I found whenever I've um, we've whenever we've written you know articles about like combatives or Krav Maga, yeah, there'll be always like three or four people saying, "Well, just shoot them with your gun." <laughs> I don't, you don't need that. Just shoot them with your gun, and it's the most you know, frustrating <laughs> thing because uh, I don't know. I mean, wh- wh- do you get that a lot too? I imagine. Yeah, we do, and you know the biggest thing about that is that. That seems like it's everyone's default response, and you know, I, I, this is so fresh on my mind just because I just attended a, a course um, a couple of months ago with T- Tony Blauer and Jeff Gonzalez. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a great course on counter ambush skills, and um, Tony Blauer is just a phenomenal instructor when it comes to combatives, and he kind of teamed up with Jeff Gonzalez, who's a um, primarily a, a weapons instructor. So. It was great to see the the dynamic between somebody that's focusing on the combative side and then transitioning to a gun or a weapon or something like that. So I really got to learn um, more of that transitional type of tra- type of movement and how hard it really is. Yeah. Um, you know, everyone thinks that a threat is just going to walk right up to him and say, hey, I'm a threat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, please give me time. I'm just going to give you time real quick to pull out your gun and yeah, um, you can handle it. Uh, it's it's not like that in the real world, and you know, faced with the reality of that, you know, everyone thinking that they're going to have time and opportunity to just shoot somebody, or that's even that the situation warrants that is just, I think it's immature to be honest with you. Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's kind of it's kind of one of the sad things. I'm seeing. There's a lot of interest in like you know civilians getting their concealed carry, but it seems like people just want to use it as their default. You know, yeah, like no matter and like that's uh, that you know. There's not every instance where you need to pull out the gun. And yeah, you make a, bring up a great point. I remember one of the training courses I've taken on um, defensive handgun use is like the instructor showed us like how easy or how quick someone can get to you before you mm-hmm. can pull out your gun. It was like, yeah, it was crazy sure. scary. Like they were like, he was like, you know, a good five yards away from me. Uh, but he was able to get to me before I was able to like really, you know, pull the gun out. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, you're toast. I mean, yeah, I think people all really underestimate. Uh, how fast people can move and like overestimate how fast they can get that gun out or that weapon out, whatever it is. Well, I think, I think defense has to be a multifaceted uh, solution. I think you not only need to know um, some stuff to be able to get to your gun, um, but you obviously need to know the skills to use it as well. So, I mean, I definitely advocate both of those and I I can't say enough about both of those things. I mean, um, I'm definitely not going to go on record to say that you're never going to be able to get your gun soon enough, but mm-hmm. you know, more than likely, um, or at least practicing and having that contingency in mind is, is really important. Awesome. So, you know, you've probably interacted with a lot of guys who are wanting to get into this. There's, you know, the sort of beginners, uh, with sort of, uh, with getting into this old tactical skill set stuff. Sure. Um, what's the, like the biggest mistake you see these novices make when they, want to learn a tactical skill or get tactical? Well, one thing would be the wrong motives. So um, not seeing the full benefit of it and thinking it's just something cool they want to do versus seeing the potential of, you know, what it could do for themselves, their lives and their family. Um, You know, they're all perishable skills. And at the end of the day, if you're not, you know, if you're not really taking it upon yourself to learn them and practice them, you're, you're not really going to get anything out of it. So I'd say that's probably the biggest mistake that I see. The biggest one. Um, here's another question I have. So like, yeah, with all this interest, uh, particularly by civilians and like learning defensive handgun shooting, learning first aid, learning wilderness survival, there's been this like, just, there's like a lot of instructors out there, you know, or people who out there who are, they say they're instructors. Hmm. Um, and I mean, so and it, you really can't tell, like there's like no organization uh, qualifying these people. So anyone can just say, yeah, I'm a handgun instructor, right? Um, there's no regulations saying, you know, no, you can't be one. Um, like, do you know what, you know what I'm talking about? It's like anyone sure. can say, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, how do you know, you know, if you go to a place in your town, like this guy's good, like what, what he's teaching is good stuff. 
Well, you know, reputation's everything for one. Um, and, you know, being able to do your own research and figure out somebody's, you know, true reputation is probably, you know, an important first step. But, you know, qualifications don't always mean competency either. Mm-hmm. Um, experience is important. Um, and you really just have to kind of question and, and test things for yourself. You know, it, I guess in the uh, in the words of the illustrious Reading Rainbow host, LeVar Burton, don't just take my word for it. So. <laughs> Good deal. All yeah. right. So we've talked a lot about the skill set because that's a lot of fun. But um, you guys also um, cover like tactical gear. And that's fun stuff. I mean, that's sure. I mean, that's just there's like Tumblr blogs dedicated to tactical <laughs> porn. Right. Which right. is like that is I want that grappling hook or I want that <laughs> trauma kit. Um, but anyways, you guys talk about like EDC, everyday carry, something that's very popular um, with a lot of guys. Are there things that you think every man should have on them all the time oh, that absolutely. will help them out. Sure. Yeah. What, what, what are some of those things? So, I mean, just to kind of, I guess, run through some stuff that I carry, which is, you know, kind of how I'd approach the subject too, is that, I mean, to go back to the medical thing, um, I would say having the basics for preventing somebody from, or helping someone from bleeding out would be probably one of the, one of the top things on my list. Um, Obviously, if your state allows it, having a concealed handgun and the license and being properly certified to carry that is important, too. Um, but, you know, I've, this is kind of something I, I like to say sometimes, too. But, you know, it's it's not only as important to, you know, take a life, but to know how to save one, too. So um, I think that, you know, having those tools on you to to be able to do that would, are important. Um, again, also, you know, to go along the lines of the, the kind of self-defense aspect, just a knife for self-defense, but, um, also a secondary cutting tool for, you know, field craft and opening boxes or whatever you might come up, come across each day too. Um, that's something I took home from uh, my friend, Jeff Gonzalez from that class too, is that, you know, he made the, the great point and it's one that I never really considered before, but, you know, a knife is not only a tool, but it's a, you know, a a great weapon for self-defense as well. And if you, you know, you're using that on a daily basis to open boxes and things like that, it's not truly there and sharp when you need it to mm. be. So, you know, that was kind of an interesting, an interesting point that got brought up and I've kind of started carrying a, you know, one of those little small Swiss army knives that I use to cut up, you know, cut boxes open and stuff most of the days at work here. So um, that was kind of interesting, but yeah. um, also, you know, a sturdy wallet for ID money, emergency contact info. Um, of course, you know, everyone's got a cell phone nowadays, uh, especially for, you know, emergencies and making calls. But um, I will say that um, a good flashlight is important too, and not to depend on your cell phone for a flashlight. <laughs> um, uh, somebody else that i um, known for quite a while, Kevin Reeve, who's wrote some articles on the site, uh, <laughs> is that it likes to say that you need one that will cut through smoke and, you know, the one on your cell phone isn't going to cut it. So, um, uh, also, you know, a good watch. I'm a big advocate of having a watch. I mean, I think that, you know, a lot of people today depend on their cell phones to tell time. And, um, I don't know, there's just something about a good watch that I love. So it could also serve as a navigation tool. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, it can. That's awesome. Um, and actually, you know, the watches I always have, have a little, uh, compass clip to them okay. all the time. So, there you go. Yeah. Um, and then I like to carry a handkerchief and a, a pocket notebook and a pen. I think those are pretty important as well. Um, obviously I've got my keys, usually a good pair of sunglasses and, um, I carry, uh, I carry lock picks on me too. Um, yeah. wow. you know, in most States it's uh, perfectly legal to do so. And as long as you're not in the act of committing a crime, it's not, it's not <laughs> illegal at all. So, um, definitely check with your state laws though, because there are some states, I think there's a state out there that doesn't allow you to do that. But, um, and then also I've always typically got some kind of personal memento on me, like a challenge coin or something like that. So how do you carry all this stuff? Cause it like, it sounds, you sound like Link from Zelda. It's like, Dude, he's, I know he's got you like, know, <laughs> it's a big list, but I, I mean, honestly, I'm wearing jeans right now and I have all that in my pocket. Wow. So you know, I'm I'm always trying to I always change my ADC. It's always something that I'm constantly changing because I always strive for smaller and more minimalist in everything I'm doing. So um I always I'm always taking size and weight into consideration, trimming stuff down and you know, things like that. So 
Awesome. You, all you need is a hook shot. There you, you go. You'd be yeah. set. And the yeah. sil- and, a, and a set of silver arrows to defeat Ganon. Yeah, it's dangerous to go alone. It's dangerous to go alone. <laughs> um, all right, so Brian, um, besides the great, you know, continuing to put out this, you know, the great content you guys do on ITS Tactical, and we've, uh, for those of you who don't know, every once in a while we'll republish content from ITS Tactical. In fact, we did the the handcuff thing. Yeah. On our site, we got a lot of flack. I got emails from police officers like saying, why are you doing this? You're working for the bad guys. But anyways, it's great yeah. stuff. Very useful. Um, what else, what's in, what's in store for you guys? What, what do you guys have in the pipeline? Well, we've always got new products in the pipeline. Um, that's something, you know, we've been doing a lot of too, is just kind of developing our own product line along with the articles and things like that. So, um, we've got some new stuff in the, in the trauma kit arena coming as well as, uh, we're working, we just launched yesterday, a little teaser on a a hypalon wallet we're working on so that's kind of some of the new stuff that we've got in terms of products but um we also have a muster each year um it's basically a uh a, a gathering that we have each year um this year we had about 40 people i'm sorry last year in october we had about 40 people that came out to it but it's our way of kind of interacting with our community and really getting hands-on with the skill sets we advocate on its so that's a big thing for us each year, and we'll be having another one of those coming up in October. Um, and then also, uh, we're about to turn five in April, so it's it's really been cool to kind of uh, see how far we've been able to come with the support of you know our community and members, and you know guys like you that are helping us out, man. I really appreciate it, and it's been great. Yeah, so. awesome. Well, very cool. Well, Brian, uh, thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Absolutely, man. And you know, once again, thanks for the opportunity. Um, I really feel like. Art of Manliness is an awesome resource, and I read it all the time, man, so keep doing what you're doing, too. Thank you, sir. Our guest today was Brian Black. Brian is the owner of ITS Tactical, and you can find that at itstactical.com. Definitely recommend check it out. It's one of my favorite websites, um, and uh, great stuff there. Well, that wraps up another edition of the Art of Manliness podcast. For more manly tips and advice, make sure to check out the Art of Manliness website at artofmanliness.com. And a great way you can support the Art of Manliness is checking out our store. We have an Art of Manliness store where you can find posters, uh, letterpress, stationery, you know, things that an Art of Manliness gentleman would want. Um, It's store.artofmanliness.com. Please check it out. Pick something up. That will help us keep the podcast going. Until next time, this is Brett McKay telling you to stay manly.